Howdy, everyone. It's Soren coming back at you to gush about my favorite show with another Infinity Train breakdown. Before I continue, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon if you haven't already. Once again, Infinity Train has delivered a delicious serving of great writing and beautiful art direction. Episode 3 and 4 both offer two very unique locations in terms of both concept and aesthetic. Additionally, neither episode failed to deliver on that sweet, sweet character exploration and development. Buckle up, folks. Here comes the recap. With Alan Dracula now secured, Alan Dracula, MT, and Jesse traverse the map car, a car which contains a world made out of paper, which seems to be visually inspired by old world maps, and is governed by a really creepy floating head dude named Marcus. Marcus designates Jesse as the explorer and sends him on a quest through the map world, searching for the missing pieces of the world's map so that the world's map can be made whole again, thus restoring the map world to its completed world state. Did you like how many times I fit in the words map and world into that sentence? However, just as they're about to complete the map, Marcus reveals that he's going to do everything in his power to prevent that from happening, as he wants to keep MT and Jesse trapped in the room forever so that he can be kept company. Jesse manages to best Marcus by drawing his own piece of the map on a spare receipt he found in his pocket. Once he does this, the room becomes a real-world scene, and Marcus, being the wind, dissolves his form and becomes, effectively, nothing, and is thus defeated. However, because the world they are in is no longer made of paper, the ocean that they were floating in becomes reflective, which enables Agent Sieve and Agent Mace to jump into the room with them and give chase, hence instigating the conflict of Episode 4. MT, Jesse, and Alan Dracula flee to the next room, which thankfully locks behind them. Unfortunately, the door ahead is also locked. The only way to unlock either of the doors is to kick a poor, poor toad, who is begging not to be kicked. Tensions rise with the crew trapped in the room, as the two agents begin to tell Jesse that MT is a criminal who needs to be apprehended. They attempt to turn Jesse against MT, which unfortunately seems to almost work. However, just as Jesse has an opportunity to let Agent Mace slip into the room through his phone, MT breaks his phone and explains to him that though she is a criminal, she didn't do anything inherently immoral. Jesse seems to regain his trust in MT. Shortly after, Agent Sieve returns to the locked entrance door with a tool designed to bust down the door. The Toad allows MT and Jesse to kick him so that they can escape. The Toad is kicked. MT, Alan, Dracula, and Jesse escape the room and take the toad with them, which leaves Agent Sieve and Agent Mace trapped in the room since without a toad to kick, they cannot unlock the doors. The challenges provided in these episodes brought out more information about MT and Jesse. It's, again, quite amazing how well these two characters mirror one another in almost every way. They are complete opposites in a way that feels completely organic and natural. In episode 2, we got to see the ways in which Jesse and MT's attitudes towards interpersonal relationships clashed with one another. In episode 3, it's shown that MT and Jesse also differ in how highly they prioritize their own well-being. In a conversation on the compass boat, Jesse reveals how he's forsaken his own wants and needs simply to make sure that the people in his life still like him. MT is perplexed by this, as MT notoriously prioritizes her wants, needs, well-being, and goals above anything else in almost every circumstance she's been in. However, this key difference in their personalities results in a positive shift for Jesse. MT gives Jesse an opportunity to process the way he's let himself be treated by other people, and mirrors back to him that it's possible he hasn't advocated for himself as much as he should have. This moment of reflection serves Jesse well, as can be seen by his number dropping after the conversation. In episode 4, we finally get to see some serious flaws in Jesse's character. We see exactly how far he will go to make sure he's well liked in his social circle when we watch a video of him aiding and bullying his own little brother with a group of friends. MT reacts to this very strongly and expresses to him that she has no reason to trust him when he'd hurt his own brother like that. Suggesting that though MT typically prioritizes herself over other people, she wouldn't do anything that would hurt another person outside of the context of true self-defense. It was really refreshing to see Jesse, who's been built up as a very kind, compassionate, good-natured person, participate in something so atrocious. Additionally, watching him have guilt and remorse for treating his brother like that is equally as refreshing. I personally believe that Jesse's primary motivation for overcoming his fear of being disliked by his peers will come from his greater desire to treat the ones closest to him, who he truly loves, with the respect and kindness they deserve. 
MT asks him if he realizes his friends are bad after she reveals that she saw the content of the video. I think this, in combination with his other moments of reflection in these two episodes, indicates that Jesse, well-meaning as he is, hasn't really taken the time to think about the decisions he makes or why he's making them. I guess this is indicative of the train's purpose itself. The train seems to be a place where people reflect on their lives when they've gotten to a point where they need to reflect more than anything. In real life, I've personally found that one of the greatest ailments upon society in the modern day is the fact that in this culture, we don't often encourage self-reflection or build spaces for people to really think about why they do the things that they do, and whether or not those decisions are decisions that they really want to make. Life seems to be focused on getting to the next thing, the next place, and the next opportunity, and while that kind of moving forward energy is very necessary, it's equally as necessary to have time to slow down and really reassess what you're doing. Infinity Train highlights the need for this kind of reflection, which is something I really appreciate. Now, I'm gonna talk about the new characters that showed up in episodes three and four. First of all, Marcus. Marcus, as an antagonist, complements the themes that have been tackled so far in the season very nicely. To me, Marcus exemplifies the quintessential toxic friend. He coerces MT and Jesse into a relationship with him, and then attempts to force them to stay trapped in the room with him so he can be kept company. He is a shining example of the self-interested, inhibiting friend. Which is interesting considering that that specific kind of person and friendship seems to coincide perfectly with MT's ideas about what friendships are like. Next. There's the toad. God, I have to gush about the toad. I'm sorry, can you say comedic gold? You do not understand how hard I laughed when that little dude dropped that first please don't kick me. I am in love with this little toad man. I tell you, I am in love. I want to hold him in my pale twiggy arms. I want to wrap him up in a palm leaf and make him some warm pond water. I love this small boy to death and I will fight for him until the end. When MT and Jesse were arguing, the tension was so palpable you could have cut it with a knife. And when that one little warty boy dropped that please don't kick me on it, it snapped in half like a rubber band that had been stretched out over a mile. It killed me. I'm gonna marry- I'm gonna marry the toad. I'm gonna marry the toad who wants to officiate the wedding. It, it's- it's official. I'm proposing to him at Denny's this weekend. Could you officiate your own wedding? I don't think you can officiate your own wedding. Please, help me. I need help. <laughs> okay, I'm done gushing about the toad. Back to the rest of the analysis. <laughs> okay, it's also really fascinating to watch MT attempt to fill the role of a denizen in Jesse's journey through the train. She's trying to artificially encourage him to experience growth so that he can get off the train and away from her faster, but she doesn't realize that the most crucial points of growth for Jesse, and for herself for that matter, are moments when both of them are holding space for one another to talk about what's really weighing on them in their personal lives. Currently, I think that by the end of the season, Jesse and MT are going to be nearly inseparable friends and will end up leaving the train together. I don't think MT is going to want to be on the train forever as, to be frank, while the Infinity Train seems like it can be very therapeutic for people who are staying for a limited amount of time, the train's sense of randomness and unpredictability and the constant presence of challenge and hardship probably makes it downright hellish to live in long term. I really don't think that the Infinity Train is designed with permanent living in mind. It really seems more like a place where people are meant to go for a while so that they can work out their problems before being able to return to their normal life um, more happy and healthy and whole. I really hope that I get to see a scene of Jesse bringing MT into his home and declaring her to be his new friend or housemate possibly. Also, I'm gonna need that frog back. If we go the rest of the season without seeing him, I think I will actually cry and live stream me crying to YouTube for eight hours because I am in love with him. I am in love with, with a toad. Wow. Anyways, folks, that's all I had to say about episodes three and four. What were your thoughts? Like it? Love it? Love, love, love it? Hate it? Tell me all about it in the comments below and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon if you haven't already. I'll see you guys tomorrow with my thoughts on episodes five and six. Ciao!